Hello, Mike here. In this video I'm going to give you an overview of Mission Manager Maps. If you're used to using a service like Bing or Google Maps, you should be pretty comfortable with the maps here as the navigation works pretty much the same. Let's start by looking how we navigate around the map. By default, the left mouse button, pressing it down, will allow you to pan around your map. If you have a mouse with a mouse wheel, turning the mouse wheel will zoom in and out. If you wanted to zoom to a particular area on your map, like let's say we wanted to en enhance this mono lake area, you can press down the shift key, hold down the left mouse button, drag a window, and when we release it, that area will be zoomed up on your map. These blue buttons and this slider here will do pretty much the same things that we just did with the mouse. Let's take a short look at map layers. This can be accessed by the layers button in the upper right corner of your map. Layers are essentially the type of map that you're looking at. In this case, a Google Streets view. If we want to look at a satellite version of this area, simply select Google Satellite. Or even a black and white version of the map. Mission Manager has a very extensive map layering system that I'm going to cover in another video. So we're going to go back to Google Streets and we're going to move on. Say we wanted to find a particular area on our map. We can do this by clicking on the edit box right above our map and typing in such things as an address, an intersection, zip code, city, even a GPS coordinate, and Mission Manager will locate that area on our map. In this case, let's try Levining, California, which is in this area. Now we have two options. We have a Find button and a Mark button. Both of these will zoom the map to the area that we've entered. The difference between the two is the Mark button will actually add a little marker on the screen that we can edit later. I'm going to cover all the adding of markers and drawing things on top of a map in another video. Let's just do a find. And you can see the map is centered and Levine in California is identified with the little pop-up button. Now let's take a look at how we can identify different things on a map. Let's go ahead and switch to Google Physical. We can see some hill shading. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click somewhere on the map. What will pop up is some information about where I've clicked. So the nearest address, some GPS locations, and the elevation. Now also there's some links in this little pop up here. So let's say we click on Google Street View and we get to Street View of exactly where we've clicked on the map. Um, that won't be available if you don't click near a street. Um, you can also open up the GPS calculator which will show you the point that you clicked and all the different GPS modes that Mission Manager supports. This makes it really nice to convert from one coordinate system to another um, for various GPS's or um, different types of coordinate systems. Currently we're working in decimal lat long and you notice at the bottom as I move the mouse around you'll see the coordinates changing based on where the mouse is hovering above. We can change the coordinate mode that we're working in by using this little box here to change the different coordinate system. So currently we're in decimal lat long, we could change it to UTM, US National Grid, degrees, minutes, seconds, etc. And once we change that, you'll notice as I move the mouse the coordinate systems will be different. This also applies to the grid. So depending on the coordinate system that you're working in, will depend on how Mission Manager will just overlay a grid um, on top of your map. So the way you turn on the grid is this little checkbox right here, and the grid will appear on top of your map. Now the grid will change based on how far you're zoomed in and out. So for example, if we zoom out, you'll see the grid squares will change. Down at the bottom here, it'll show you the size of the grid that's currently being displayed. Now the grid will change based on the coordinate system as well. So for instance, if we go to a UTM grid or decimal lat long, you'll see that the grid will change based on the type of coordinate system that we're working in. The last part that I'll mention in this video is a couple other buttons on the screen that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, the first actual area is the map elements area all the way to the left and this is where things will show up if we draw them or if we're actually in a mission. Uh, I'm going to cover those in another video. Uh, there's also a print button uh, which will let you print your map and you can also select a, a large size if you had a a large area printer such as a plotter. 
uh, import and export map data. Uh, again, this is for things that you draw on the map. Uh, you can export them to a GPS device um, or another piece of software that you might use. Uh, up in the upper uh, right corner, uh, there's there's three buttons up there. Uh, the first one here uh, will let you select a location of where you're at. So if you have a browser that's capable of just of telling Mission Manager where you're at, you can press this button and it'll take you to that location. Uh, the GPS calculator, which we looked at earlier, will let you put in a coordinate system that you want um, to convert to the different modes. Um, and lastly, a link button, which will let you link this map uh, and, and put a link in an email that you can send to somebody else. So that's it for this video. Uh, look for more mapping videos, and uh, thanks for watching.